Welcome back to another edition of Sports Talk Philadelphia here on the South TV. We've got a great show coming up for you today. I'm your host, Tyler Harper, and with me today is a great panel making his LaSalle TV debut. We have Isaac Perry III, we have Anthony Fleet, and we have Steve Graham. Now let's dive right into some Eagles talk because yet again, primetime, Monday Night Football for the Birds, and yet again they shined on primetime. Let's take a look at those stats as beating the Panthers, rather trouncing the Panthers, 45-21. Uh, you can see the highlights there. Darren Sproles, only one yard, one carry, eight yard rushes for a touchdown. 65 yard punt return though for a touchdown, also good. Connor Barwin, six tackles, three and a half of them sacks. And Brent Selleck, five catches, 116 yards. Obviously other players to highlight, but we'll get to them in a little bit. Guys, again, prime time again. The Eagles, 3-0 and in prime time this year. How good is it to see this team shining when the lights are the brightest right now? Well, all I can say is that I really feel like the Eagles did a fantastic job the way that they, they were able to move up and down the field, every single possession. I think that the defense played, played one strong performance by Bradley Fletcher and Kerry Williams and so on. Being out there on Monday nights, you have no choice but to play well because that's where you have everybody around the world watching you play. Right, yeah, when the lights are shining brightest, it's always good to see how a team responds to that. And three times they've been put in that situation and three times they perform well. Two of them in dominating fashion against the Giants and against the Panthers. So it's always great to see them rise to a level, to a stage that they are playing on. Because for example, you see the Bengals, they were regarded as a good team. And once they play in prime time, you know, they kind of shrink. So to see the Eagles, you know, really step up and play well under the primetime lights is a really good thing to see. Yeah, this team definitely does love the primetime. And, and what's best to see is that when your backup quarterback has his first start in a, in, in a couple of years, this whole team came together and there was a balance in the defense, the special teams, the offense. The whole pressure of this, this primetime game wasn't put on our backup quarterback. And that was just great to see the returns and, and just all the sacks. Kind of going off that, it was kind of around this time that due to injury, eventually Nick Foles took the hold and around this time that this team is starting to make a run. Obviously that's merely coincidental, but do you like that it's taken this long, but now the team has their legs under them? Yes, I think so. Uh, it, it, nothing doesn't come together from, from day one. It takes time. It's a process. Just like the defense, Kerry Williams and Bradley Fletcher didn't even get their first interception until just this past Monday. So that was definitely encouraging going forward as well. Like you saw D'Amico Ryan's going out last week, how the defense, everybody had picked up the slack, everybody they didn't miss a had did their part. Nope, not at all, not at all. Yeah, you, you always wanna see improvement as the season goes along, especially in all three phases. You know, there's a lot of injuries taking place and guys they are just filling right in and keeping the train rolling, so to speak. And it's just really important, especially going forward in the season because it's the National Football League, there's going to be injuries and you have to rely on some of these substitutes to come in and just keep performing at a high level. And to see them do that so far this season has just been huge. And it just, for an Eagles fan, it just makes you really excited moving forward. <laughs> Second season in a row, it's gonna take two quarterbacks to get this team going. But if that's what it takes, it's good to see that, like I said, special teams is such a a big factor this team right now. When Nick Foles is struggling, we're getting returns. Uh, I think we have nine returns in nine games so far in, in touchdowns between the defense and the special team. So when a team's coming together in the middle of the season, right before your arguably your biggest game of the year against the Packers this Sunday, it, that's essential to, to prove that you're an elite team getting ready for the postseason. Yeah, and let's talk about the other side of the ball, specifically uh, with the Panthers, Cam Newton. What happened to this guy? I mean, is it a combination of his offensive line? Is something getting into his head? I mean, I thought a couple years ago, we all thought this guy was going to be one of the elite quarterbacks. Now he, he's not looking so hot. I think that, that Cam Newton, there was a lot of hype around him when he got drafted. He took the Panthers to a 12-4 and record just last year. I think what happened on Monday night was just, was just the case of the offensive line got overmatched. Every single time you saw the ball snap, you had offensive linemen on the ground and you normally had like three or four Eagles going after Cam, like like Connor Barwin and Michael Kendricks. They were just all over him. Bad night for Cam Newton. Yeah, Cam Newton, it's, it's been tough. He's been banged up. He was coming into the season off of an ankle surgery, so that really limits his mobility, which was one of his strengths. 
you know, since coming out of college. So having one of the aspects of his game, you know, ha handicapped is, has been difficult. Now he still has a nice strong arm, but he's just, just been inaccurate. And, you know, some of it's the offensive line, you know, they have, they're banged up, but credit the Eagles pass rush. You know, they did a fantastic job at getting a lot of pressure on him, making him uncomfortable, having him scramble around. And the Eagles secondary as well, they covered the Panthers receivers rather well. So I would say it was a combination of just Cam being banged up and the fact that the Eagles just played a great game defensively. Cam Newton came into this league as a run first quarterback and I think it took a few years but the NFL defensive coordinators have really figured out this kind of offense and Cam Newton right now is still in the process of becoming a pocket passer and of course his injuries have slowed him down but as you can see a bad offensive line won't help either and he's getting beaten up but while you're still in that process of becoming a pocket passer your team's going to lose especially when you trade Steve Smith your number one target as well. Yeah that's true too. All right and speaking of Cam Newton's offense, they got overmatched by the Eagles defense, so let's see that player of the week graphic. The entire Eagles defense, I mean, we had to give it to him. Three interceptions, two fumbles, nine sacks, but my question is, is this the real Eagles defense or were they capitalizing on a weak opponent? I think we will learn everything we need to know about the Eagles defense after this Sunday when they play Aaron Rodgers because, in my opinion, the defense has been up and down. Um, we all go back to the Rams game when they allow like three touchdowns in the fourth quarter and they barely won by six. Then they put together the game against the Giants and a good game against the Texans. And then they went out on Monday and just, just destroyed the Panthers. I think we will find out all we need to know about it. Like, can the defense really perform against a big time quarterback in the future Hall of Famer in Rodgers? I think they'll they'll live up to the task and they'll do well. Right, I, I agree with Isaac. Green Bay opponent will definitely be a huge test. But as far as the Eagles defensive success, it starts with the pass rush. If any pass rush is able to get pressure on an opposing quarterback, that just leads to you know a domino effect of <clears throat> dominating performance of defenses. Because when you get pressure on the quarterback, that's when he starts to scramble around, and that's when the receivers start to scramble around. So they're not running these set routes, and you don't have to worry about your secondary getting burned as much because there's a lot of helter-skelter going on in the field because of the pass rush. So if the Eagles' pass rush can continue to be a strength of the defense, that'll help the linebackers because, as we've mentioned, Casey Matthews and Emmanuel Acho, they're replacements. So that Eagles' defensive front four, they need as much – they need to put as much pressure on the quarterback as possible in order to help out, you know, some of the weaker aspects of the defense, which are the linebackers and the secondary. Yeah, I mean, going off of that, Steve, we'll start with you on this. Uh, let's focus on Connor Barwin. This guy, he just goes out there and plays, and he's really such not only a great team guy, but obviously I believe he's second in the league in sacks right now. This guy is just playing great, and another linebacker, of course, the other one being Domingo Ryans that we got from the Texans. How great of a pickup was Connor Barwin? Yeah, Connor Barwin is just an unbelievable career game, like you said, against Carolina. And what the best thing about it is that last week, his teammate for the past two teams he's been on, uh, Ryan, with uh, the Texans and the Eagles, goes down. And then now it's like, who's going to step up as the leader? And Barwin comes in, has a career game. So it, it's just good to see because after that game, all, all of the fans, everyone had questions of, now what? This is a major hole in the defense, a middle linebacker's gone. Who's going to step up? And when you have 10 and a half sacks in the season, here he is, Barwin. Now, take it and run with it. And he's a good team guy and everything. So it's just, he, he really stepped up, and that's refreshing to see. I, no. Yeah, uh, Bar Barwin's versatility is really key to his success. Because we just mentioned he's able to get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, if he can't get all the way to the quarterback, he can jump up and swat down a pass, which is also huge. Because, you know, say if a cornerback gets beat or a secondary guy gets beat, that bad a pass really doesn't have any, has any effect on the secondary's poor play. So because of his versatility, that really helps him as a player and helps the Eagles defense because they need his versatility. They need him being able to get pressure on the quarterback and also playing the passing lanes for a weaker component of the defense, which is the secondary. Yeah, and Bill Davis ended up in most of that Carolina game. If you saw, Babin was not even rushing the quarterback. He had him, you know, containing Barwin. Cam Newton. Barwin, I'm sorry, Babin. <laughs> Uh, and Fletcher Cox 
caused a lot of the pressure, and you see Barwin coming and get the sack. So that's good that he's containing both, and he can, you know, bum yeah, rush I mean, the it, entire offensive line. Yeah, if he's just finding a way to get there, more power to him. Mm -hmm. But now let's move on to our quarterback, and I still can't believe he's our quarterback, but let's roll with it. Mark Sanchez, uh, not a bad start. 20 for 37, 330 passing yards, and two touchdown passes. Uh, but going down the line, rate his performance on a scale of 1 to 10 for me. Ooh, that's a good question. I will, I will probably give him a 9. nine. And the only reason why I wouldn't give him a 10 is because some of his passes were a little bit um, suspect. He was 20 for 37 for, for 332 yards. Um, that has to come together a little bit more. But all in all, I think he played the fantastic, fantastic game last night. His first game started in two years. Um, you, you can't ask for, ask for much more out of him. I think that the one thing that, that really, really gets to me in a good way is how great all of the Eagles quarterbacks who have played over the last year and a half have done in this offense. I mean, Michael Vick, Nick Foles, uh, uh, Mark Sanchez. The, uh, so I really think that Mark Sanchez will do well. Yeah, I would probably give him a seven. That's about he, where I'd put him. Yeah, he, he's, he had a good game, obviously, with the, his stats that you guys already mentioned. Uh, I would like to see him get the outside receivers a little more involved. You know, him and uh, Jordan Matthews, they had a really good connection. But I would like to see him get Macklin and Cooper more involved. And also Zach Ertz, because, you know, Selleck, he had a good game as well. But his main guys were really Matthews and Selleck. And that, that's good. Don't get me wrong. I like what they did. I like the output. But for him to have a 10 performance, I would say you would need to get more guys involved in the offense. All right, now let's move on to really the guy Sanchez has mainly been targeting, and that's the rookie, Jordan Matthews, who's come alive in these past two games. Let's look at his stats. 10 catches, 178 yards, and three touchdowns the past two weeks. Is this him hitting his stride, or is this kind of a la Foles and Cooper last year? Is this Sanchez just happening to find Jordan Matthews? Uh. I, I guess you could say that to a certain degree because it, we all remember back in the summer how when Sanchez was with the number twos and so was Jordan Matthews. Now they're both number ones right now. So, so I guess you could compare that to, to um, Foles, and, Cooper. Foles and Cooper. But for some reason, I see something really special in Jordan Matthews because this isn't the first good game that he had, if y'all remember, back in the Washington game, he had two, two, two uh, touchdowns. Yeah, but other than yeah, that, two touchdowns silent. Yeah, right. yeah, but I just think that that now that he has his quarterback in Mark Sanchez, who he's been work, working with all summer long, I think that his numbers are actually going to increase a little bit more. Yeah, you remember coming out of training camp, how highly regarded Jordan Matthews was. You know, they were comparing him to be the next Terrell Owens Terrell. of the Eagles mm -hmm. and things like that. And, of course, being a rookie, that'll take some time before we can really compare him to a guy like Terrell Owens, who's a proven veteran, yeah. and a proven almost, I would say, Hall of Famer. For you. But All right. Well, sorry to cut you off, but now we've got to move on. Let's get into a little bit of a preview real quick of the Eagles-Packers matchup this week uh, by looking at the guy who happens to play quarterback for the Packers, Mr. Discount, double-check himself, Aaron Rodgers, 120.1 QB rating, 2,407 passing yards and 25 touchdown passes. Six of those coming last week against Chicago. This guy's MVP of the league so far, in my opinion. Do you agree? I think I would probably have to put just Andrew Luck probably ahead of him. And I just, but Aaron Rodgers has, has had such a fantastic year. I think that he's been playing out of his mind. Um, I think he's actually going to go, go, go to Lambeau on Sunday and have a very, very good game against us. But... I still think that, that the Eagles will win in the end now. All right, Steve, real quick, your thoughts on number 12. Uh, I agree with you, Tyler. I think he is definitely at the top of his game right now. You know, back in 2011, he's having those numbers. You know, he's 4-0 at Lambeau, and that's what makes this upcoming game so scary is that in the past four games, he hasn't even had to finish out the game he's playing so well. Yeah. His numbers speak for himself, and this defense better come ready to play. Yeah, I agree with that, and with that, Let's go to our prediction poll for this week's game. Yeah, because of that guy, uh, as you can see, he's my standout star. I'm taking the pack in this one. As much as I hate to do it, I mean, he's just too good. I have him winning 28-8-17. I hope I'm wrong. I really do hope I'm wrong. But 
number 12 is just playing too good right now. Isaac, you disagree. You've got the Eagles winning 31-28. And Jeremy Macklin is your standout star. Yes, I picked Jeremy Macklin because, for one, he has over 800 receiving yards this year. He's on pace to, pace to break Mike Quick's, Mike Quick's receiving record. I think that if the Eagles are going to have, have any, any chance at all, two things has to happen. One, you have to run the ball effectively. McCoy has to get going. And number two, Jeremy Macklin. He has to have those kinds of performances that he had out there in Arizona and not the one that he had against Carolina where he had um, three receptions for 37 yards. Can't have that against this team. All right, Anthony Fleet, you agree with me. You take the pack. 35-31, your final score. And you have Jordy Nelson as your MVP. Yeah, when you watch Packer games, and they've been on TV a lot in the Philadelphia market, and I saw a lot of Packer games. When you watch Jordy Nelson run his routes, he creates a lot of separation. Whenever this guy's catching the ball, he's open by like five or six yards at least. Oh, yeah, it's not even so, close. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. And as I've mentioned before, earlier in the show, the Eagles secondary, as we all know, isn't you know, a top-notch secondary. It's not an elite secondary. So I think it's going to be really difficult for a guy like Bradley Fletcher to transition from covering a guy like Jericho Cotchery to covering one of the most dynamic receivers in the game with one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the game, that Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Nelson connection is going to be really good. And I think that's the reason why the Packers beat the Eagles on Sunday. And Steve, you had the Eagles 34, 31, and you have Cody Parkey as your standout star. As Take it should. away, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> I, I see this game coming down to a game winning field goal. Hopefully it's within 50 yards for the benefit of my fantasy team. Um, <laughs> but the only way this game stays close, I think is if they creatively rush Aaron Rodgers without blitzing. And a struggling Green Bay offensive line right now, this is very well possible, and I see it coming down to a close game. All right, well, that does it for Eagles Talk for this week. Of course, Eagles Packers play this Sunday. But with that in mind, let's talk about the hockey team, the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, let's see how they've been doing. The past three games, they've been doing really well ever since a tough loss in Florida a couple weeks ago with 12 goals, goals for them, five goals allowed on a three-game win streak. Despite hitting a lot of injuries, how good is it to see that the Flyers, they keep on moving and their offense is clicking right now? I think that the Flyers are, are I'll put it this way, they, they are doing better now compared to where it was at at the beginning of the season where, where they were 0-3, 0-4. But now they have finally turned the corner now, winning the last, last three. Claude Drew is the captain. He has to lead these guys. I firmly believe that that this will continue and it's not just a one-time thing. Right, it's similar to what the, we were just talking about with the Eagles, how they were able to, you know, they sustained some injuries, but the backups are there to produce. The same thing with the Flyers. They're getting a lot of defense, a lot of injuries, particularly with the defensemen. So it's kind of difficult, of course, especially on a goalie, when you rely on your defensemen to kind of help protect the shield for you. So to see them be able to perform the way they are, you know, they signed the guy, Carlos Kuliakovu, and guys like Del Zotto, he's finally coming into his zone. Right. That's really the main reason why the Flyers are able to have so much success, because we already know their talent in the forward and center positions. It's just a matter of the defenseman being able to play consistently. Anthony puts it well. It's how you produce after, after injuries, like, the, like perfect comparisons to the Eagles. It's how these Flyers, compared to last year, are no longer relying on the power play for their points. They're playing better five on five. They're producing in each line. And you see, you know, Voracek, Claude Drew, you can get into all the stats. But they're taking less penalties. Exactly. Well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Less dumb penalties. They're staying out of the penalty box and leaving the fighting to Ronaldo when they need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, Steve mentioned him earlier, but let's bring up a graphic about uh, Jake Voracek. Oh, no, Voracek, more like Scorachek. A <laughs> little nice meme that I found down there. But seriously, let's take a look at Jake Voracek's stats. Uh, he's been doing well. Six goals, 16 assists. Second in points in the NHL behind Sidney Crosby. Guys, a lot of people predicted that Jake Voracek was going to be a standout star and become a force in the NHL this year. So far, so good, right? Yes, yes. And I think that now the Flyers may finally have something big now, that one-two punch. You have, you have Claude Giroux, now you got Voracek right now. I think, I think that these two are on the same page and they – start going through that Eastern Conference, hey, the Flyers are going to be a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, Voracek, his complimentary role with Claude Giroux is huge because everybody in the National Hockey League knows that Giroux is really the, the guy, he's the captain for the Flyers. 
So a lot of their focus defensively would be on a guy like Giroux. So for Voracek to really be able to step up and really produce, especially in the scoring output, as you said, only Sidney Crosby is ahead of him in the points. That's incredible. That's an incredible feat for Voracek because that's able to take some pressure off of Claude Giroux and he's able to have more space and more time to do dynamic things that he does with the puck. Yeah, and when Jacob Voracek came to the Flyers, he was never expected to be average. He was always going to be above average. But he's having an all-star season. And like you said, this now takes the pressure off our captain. They're on the same line. Now it's spread the puck. And what Voracek is doing better now is that he's, as soon as he gets the puck, I remember he would just pass it right away. Like he's, he's relaxed, he's confident, and he's taking good shots when he needs to. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to move on to uh, the Philadelphia Phillies. I know what you're thinking. Why are we talking about the Phillies? It's not even their season. But uh, winter meetings are this week, and all we've been hearing on social media is the rumors of a fire sale. Guys, how likely do you think this is? We know how stubborn the Phillies front office can be. I would, I would not be surprised if, if there was a fire sale because you have to look back. The, the Phillies won the World Series in 2008. Everybody was happy about it. We went to the World Series in 2009 and lost to the Yankees. Ever since that loss, we have gone through four years of, of, of inconsistency and just, just plain bad. Um, we have been in the basement of our division. I think over the last two years, Ryan Howard has not lived up, has, has not been right over the last, last couple of years. Chase, Cut, Chase Utley has been getting hurt. Uh, so I would not be surprised that, that that happened. Maybe they knew me need to blow the thing up and start fresh again. All right. Um, and speaking of that, uh, Fleet, I'll start with you on this. Uh, a lot of the rumors have been circulating around our ace, Cole Hamels, and whether or not he should be traded. Now apparently reports are that he'd be happy with getting traded. So uh, would you trade Cole Hamels? I mean, initially, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to trade Cole Hamels. I'd rather build around him. But if you're hearing reports of him wanting to be traded, then obviously if you're able to get a good enough deal, I would just, I would just move him because you, you don't want to keep him here if he doesn't want to be here. I'm sure as an athlete, as a top-notch athlete, he wants to compete. He wants to win a championship again. So he does, he does, I think from his perspective, he doesn't want to participate in his rebuild. So if, I would say if the Phillies are able to get – because they need to get wowed by a deal. That's what I've been hearing. If they're able to get wowed by a deal by a, a desperate contender, then I say just pull the trigger and just let him go. Yeah, and from what I hear, Cole Hamels is he, – he's a loyal Philly. And, and what he's saying, he wants to win. He's a competitor. But if there's no offer that's of value to his play at this point in his, in his career, then, you know, he's, he's ready to stay in Philadelphia and continue to produce for us. Mm -hmm. So I respect that about him is that, you know, you want to win, but also you were given an opportunity here, and, and it's going to be up to what the offer is. Yeah, I completely agree with that because, of course, a couple summers ago, by the trade deadline, he signed that six-year year extension. But, of course, things haven't gotten any better here the mm -hmm. past couple of years. And, of course, you got to respect the competitor and a guy. He does want to win. Yeah. So if he were to get it moved and you could find the right package because you can't just trade him to trade him, right. I think you got to pull the trigger on that deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, looking at our time now, it's time for our favorite part of the show. It's the Fast Five. Of course, five questions, round robin. Uh, we'll start with Steve. Uh, of course, the big talk was Sanchez and cheesesteaks after the Monday night game. So settle the debate, and you can only pick between these two places, Pats or Geno's. Uh, I go with Pats because I've never been to Geno's. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That's a good reason. All right, Anthony. Ken Giles finished fourth in Rookie of the Year ear voting in the NL. Who was the last Philly to win Rookie of the Year? Uh, was it Ryan Howard? It was Ryan Howard in 2006. Good job. Thank you. All right, Isaac, yeah. Michael Carter-Williams returns to the Sixers this week. Yeah. How good is it, real quickly, to see him come back and start to take form with this team? Very good because he, he, he is the captain and the leader of the team. He's going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, rookie of the year, how can you go wrong? Absolutely. Steve, this past week, LaShawn McCoy made not so bright of a comment saying that the 2012 Eagles, you know, the team that went 4-12, and 12, had more talent than this year's team. Not the best comment, right? How dumb was this comment? It sounds like nostalgia of the dream team. But, uh, oh, God. Don't say those words. <laughs> yeah, but I, I disagree with that. Yeah. Um, definitely a better well-developed. Maybe, maybe as a good point, and not as much talent, but better developed and coming together as a team this year. Right. So, yeah. And, Anthony, we end with you. When this Philly season comes, will Ryan Sandberg already be on the hot seat? Um, I, I don't think so, because as Pat Gillick already mentioned, they're not expected to really compete. If they were, a if they were thought of as a competitor coming into the season, 
and they weren't do, getting the job done, I would say yes. But because there's more of a relaxed approach to this season as being non-competitors, I would say no. All right, well, that does it for us for this week. Uh, but before we go, uh, just a quick reminder that, again, still got the mustache here, growing it for November. <laughs> so please donate at mobro.co slash SDP. Any donation will do. It goes to a great cause. And with that, you can find us anywhere on social media, uh, facebook.com slash sports talk Philadelphia, on Twitter, at LaSalle TV Philly, LaSalle TV at LaSalle.edu for the email. You can see all our episodes online, youtube.com slash LaSalle 56 TV. And then lastly, we are just online in general, LaSalle.edu slash LaSalle TV. Remember to never stop exploring. So, I mean, great show this week. Uh, congrats to Isaac on making his thank debut. You. Thank you. Thank you to Anthony and thank you to Steve for coming on. Thanks and with that, I'm Tyler Harper. We'll see you next week after Eagles Packers.